thank you dr david ford uh, for a very very generous introduction and uh, it is always a pleasure to talk to the audience at the uh, rajiv gandhi national institute of youth development of which i am uh, uh, affiliated or associated for the last uh, maybe 10 years as a consultant to the india youth development report uh, uh, let me also thank Professor Sibna Dev, Director of RGNYAD, for inviting me to deliver this talk to you. Uh, more focusing on health situation of youth in Indian uh, scenario. So let me briefly touch upon youth and health, the status and challenges in India. Uh, as I as uh, introduced by the organizers. I am with the International Institute for Population Sciences. It's a deemed university under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Government of India. We are involved in carrying out major national level surveys, including National Family Health Survey, District Level Household Survey, Longitudinal Aging Study in India, Global Adult Tobacco Survey, and, and earlier, the Youth in India Study as well. So with that introduction, let me talk something about the youth and health. You know that if you take the adolescents and youth, they comprise about around more than 30% of India's population. You know, uh, relatively India is a young country, though the age structure is slowly undergoing changes, but still we have a large proportion of young people in our country. And they represent India's socioeconomic and political future and forming an essential part of our labor force, our skills, our capabilities, our human capital, and ability to harvest demographic dividend. If you have to harvest or reap the demographic dividend, which we think that we are going to get for the next two to three decades, that means our youth need to be educated, skilled, and gainfully employed. Then only we will be able to reap the demographic dividend. Compared to the previous generations, the current day, the youth of today are more educated, more aware about many things, relatively more healthier, they are more mobile, and they are more tech savvy compared to the previous generation. But the current youth also face a lot of vulnerabilities with regard to health conditions, economic situation, and social realities. However, we have very little data and information available about the health conditions of the youth and adolescents. Particularly, we don't have many surveys. <coughs> Though we have good information about the adult woman, the elderly, and to some extent the children. When you compare to the youth, we have very little information available about, particularly about their health. We have good information about their education, many other things, skills, employment. But if you ask about the health conditions of the youth, we have uh, very little information available in India. That is a uh, sad reality. Now, there are major concerns pertaining to the health status of youth, youth in India, uh, particularly related to their reproductive behaviors and, and lifestyles. Though we have various international agreements like International Conference on Population and Development, ICPD, the United Nations Conference on Population and Development, all those international documents, as well as the national document, emphasize the right to health of young people, the youth, including access to counseling, health services for sexual and reproductive health. So all the international declarations very well emphasize the right to health of young people. Similarly, at the national level, if you look at the national youth policy or national population policy, or even the national health policy and national policy for empowerment of women, they all recognize very well the need to address the health and well-being of the country's young population and to enable them to realize their full potential to make informed and responsible decisions related to their health and rights particularly sexual and reproductive rights. 
So though these are all well uh, stated, but when you look at the health programs and policies in our country, there are very little focused on the adolescents and youth. So they remain mainly neglected. A large number of youth in our country cannot make a healthy transition to adulthood because lack of knowledge, lack of awareness, lack of access to the services, whether it is counseling or reproductive health services or even sex education and many other things. So the major problem what we have in India is limitation or lack of data. As I said earlier, we don't have good data nationally representative data to understand the status of health status of youth in our country. Most of our health policies and programs in India lack a comprehensive understanding of the health requirements of adolescents and youth. And this is mainly because lack of comprehensive data, lack of nationally representative data on the health conditions of the youth. If you take the well-known surveys, like the surveys done by our institute IAPS, the National Family Health Survey, we have already completed five rounds of survey and the sixth round of National Family Health Survey will be undertaken next year, that is 2023. We had many rounds of district level household survey, annual health surveys, but the focus was essentially on married women and their reproductive health situations between the age 15 to 44 years, particularly the married women. But when we talk about the youth in India, you have a large number of unmarried men and women, and we don't have much information available about the data or surveys available. To them. So practically no information is available on the health status of unmarried young men and women. So in this scenario, many public health programs are not youth oriented. Hence the large majority of young people rarely seek sexual and reproductive health care services from the government facilities. So due to insufficient data on the health status of Indian youth, uh, I tried to portray the a scenario of health conditions of the youth using data from whatever data available from various sources, including census, the national sample surveys, national family health survey and other studies. Limited information available, the latest information available to portray the health conditions of the youth in India. Now you are all familiar with this census data of 2011. Unfortunately, our 2021 or 2022 census is still not there. Uh, we don't know what is going to happen. Uh, but you know that the proportion of youth, adolescents and youth constitute a major share. If you take the uh, 10 to 19 year age groups, it is, it is coming around 20% of India's population. And if you take 20 to 29 age group, 10 years, it will also constitute around 19% or 18% of India's total population. So if you broadly take 15 to 29 as a youth population of our country, that, that constitutes around 30% of India's total population. That is a scenario. Now, if you look at the work participation, again, I have to depend on the census. Uh, you, you will see a good number of the adolescents are working and the, among the youth. But what you see is their work participation is much higher in rural areas compared to urban areas and much higher among the males compared to females, both among the adolescents and youth. Now, let me get into one or two important issues here. Let us look at the marriage because marriage it is not only just an age at marriage but marriage has many implications for the health of young men and women and it, the early marriage of girls will lead to the early pregnancy or teenage pregnancies and it has many health implications the, the maternal health and the child health infant mortality and maternal mortality and also because of the marriage, they discontinue their education. Uh, there are many, many things happening. So if you look at the marriage, of course, there are a lot of discussion about child brides and child grooms. Uh, according to the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, it defines that any marriage or union between two people, two uh, people where one or both partners are under 18 years of age as child marriage. Though we have done a sufficient 
remarkable progress in reducing the child marriage child marriage means any marriage happening of a boy or a girl below 18 years of age and we also have many legal provisions the prohibition of child marriage act 2006 which says that the legally prescribed minimum age at marriage for a girl in india is 18 years and a boy it is 21 years but despite all these campaigns despite all these legislations awareness programs even increase in the education of girls even now the latest data shows that good proportion of girls are still getting married before they reach 18 years of age child marriage still persist over 6 million young girls in our country are getting married before 18 years of age so the younger they are married more the health risk they face so the implications of early marriage particularly on health are negative for both boys and girls it has more devastating impact on girls because they get married early they get pregnant early they have become mothers early and they discontinue their education the chances of their empowerment employment which are everything is almost cut off because of the early marriage they have to take the at a very young age they have to take the family responsibility of looking after the children and many other things so boys and girls are subject to early marriage are often forced to drop out of schools if you look at the national family health survey data it shows that good number of girls stated uh, why they dropped out of school because they are married because of their marriage and because of the marriage they have to take up some menial jobs to support their families it is applicable for the boys as well so this situation of early marriage perpetuates a cycle of poverty and violation of their fundamental rights uh, it is more in the case of girls but if you look at the data very carefully you will see that a, around 17% of the boys according to the latest data from the national family health survey the survey was carried out in 2019 2021 that is the latest one available which shows that 17% of the boys also get married before they reach 21 years of age and around 24% of the girls are getting married before they reach 18 years of age so though we are they are discussing if we have a legal provision of age at marriage then now there are a lot of discussion going on increasing the age at marriage of girls as well but even with the existing legislation and laws and programs and campaigns large number of people or young girls and boys are getting married in different parts of the country before they reach the legally accepted minimum age at marriage Now let me give you some data this is from the latest data from the national family health survey of 2019 21 you can see the women getting married before age 18 years and the men getting married before the age of 21 years that is a legally prescribed age at marriage at the india level national level 23% of the girls are getting married okay before 18 years and in the case of boys it is 18 18% but there are some states you can see assam bihar tripura even west bengal that this proportion is where this percentage is very very high as i as 40% 40% of the girls getting married before age 18 years and in the case of boys it is quite high in bihar in madhya pradesh and many other states so there are consequences due to early marriage and child bearing how harmful health conditions you know you will might have heard about lot of maternal mortality happens among the teenage mothers and uh, not getting the proper attention and treatment many women die during the pregnancy and child birth and many uh, child deaths also happen so child marriage constitutes a gross violation of human rights leaving physical psychological and emotional scars of for life attributed to higher infant child and maternal mortality rates so as i said earlier according to the latest data from the national family health survey 5 which is of 2019 2021 23% of the women aged currently aged 20 to 24 years were got married before 18 years and similarly 18% of the men also got married so we we when we discuss about age at marriage we usually talk about the girls 
age, child marriage and all. But we also need to give enough attention to in many states, rural areas, many backward areas, the boys are also getting married much earlier. And you, you know the Indian traditional marriage system. If the boys are getting married earlier, the chances that girls getting married much earlier than that is because always in Indian traditional family arranged marriages, the, the, they prefer the girls much younger than the boys, at least four or five years gap. So boys are getting married at the age of 18 or 20, then naturally you can expect the girls are getting married at the age of 15 or 16. So we, if you have to address the problems of child brides, we also have to address the problem of child grooms. And unfortunately, there is not much attention given to the problem of the child grooms, which is according to the latest data, even 18% of the boys are uh, coming under the getting married before the legally prescribed minimum age of marriage. Let me give you immediately after marriage what happened to most of these young girls who are married. According to the latest data from the National Family Health Survey of the 2019 and 2021, nearly 7% of the women married in the age group of 15 to 19 years were already mothers or pregnant at the time of survey. Though it has come down compared to the earlier NFHS, it was 8%. It has come down to almost 7%, but still you can see 7% of the girls are already or women are already mothers or pregnant, okay, in the age group of 15 to 19 years. So that is the reality. In some of the states, the figure is much higher in Andhra Pradesh, in Tripura, even in West Bengal and many other states. Uh, all this data is available in public domain. Those who are interested, you can visit the website of National Family Health Survey or website of IAPS. You will get uh, each state-wise more details, more, more detailed information. So the early marriage, it is not just a question of marriage, marriage and discontinuing education, lack of employment, but it's also a question of early uh, pregnancy, teenage pregnancy and taking care of the children and families and other things, particularly for girls getting married early is a really a devastating experience in their life. Now, let us also talk about anemia. Uh, anemia is one of the major health problems and look, taking the data from the National Family Health Survey and particularly the women of in the age group of 15 to 19 years, we can call them adolescent women or youth women, uh, you can see the large, nearly more than half of them are anemic. These are all not based on any statement or self-reported. These are all based on the testing done, collecting the blood samples from the respondents and testing for that. The mild anemia, moderate anemia and severe anemic, you know. So nearly half of the women in India and particularly among the youth also are anemic. So NFHS 5. 59% of the women in the age group of 15 to 19 years are anemic. In fact, what is surprising is that, I am sure all of you must have read a lot of newspaper reports about it. Though many indicators have shown some improvement over a period of time, but as far as the nutrition and anemia is concerned, it is not showing much improvement over the last uh, maybe 5 to 10 years. And in fact, it is worsening. In fact, it was 54% now showing 59% at the national level and some of the states. The, the, the better states are Jammu Kashmir, uh, the, the worst states are Jammu Kashmir, Gujarat, West Bengal and Tripura. And the better performing states are Manipur, Kerala, Nagaland and Mizoram, where they have a lesser proportion of women with the anemic conditions. Now, another important dimension of the youth is which is not discussed much because lack of enough data and evidence but if you go by the national crime records bureau which they come out every year the data about the suicides happening among the indian youth if you take the youth here as 18 to 30 years of youth uh, you will see it's a major concern let me also state here that there are a lot of problems with this data of national crime records bureau because it will be always an underestimate because it is it is based on the cases reported in the police stations. So large number of instances 
of violence against youth, violence against girls, suicide are never reported. So we don't have any data. But so this is all based on whatever reported in the local police stations, compiled and prepared. So according to World Health Organization estimates, about 700,000 people died due to suicide every year. And the fourth leading cause of death in the age group of 15 to 19 years. Fourth leading cause of death among the, in the younger age group. So the major source of suicide statistics in India is estimated by is around the National Crime Records Bureau. But as I said earlier, the data is questionable and usually an underestimated because they are based on the police reports. Whatever cases reported in the police station are only compared. So according to this data, the prominent reasons reported by young people committing suicide were family problems, illness, failure in the love affairs, marriage related issues, and even mental illness. So um, one can look at this data more carefully, analyze it uh, by age-wise, state-wise, city-wise, and see the trends over a period of time. There is a scope for that. Now, let me take you to another important dimension. When we talk about health, we cannot forget the influence of tobacco and alcohol consumption. Recently, our institute, IAPS, has carried out the Global Youth Tobacco Survey. This is called, very recently, 2019 survey. Global Youth Tobacco Survey. The data is also now available. Um, and according to this, uh, to, to understand, to determine the level of tobacco consumption, so it is a cross-sectional survey and nationally representative school-based survey. Basically, this survey considered the children or school children in the age group 13 to 15 years. And it is a nationally sample. We, it covered around 97,000 school children in that age group from 987 schools spread across all the states and union territories in India. So the Global Youth Tobacco Survey gave us some idea about the consumption of tobacco among our school-going children in the age group of 13 to 15 years. And as you can see, among the students aged 13 to 15 years, nearly 8.5% are current tobacco users. They are currently using tobaccos. And it, is, it has gone down compared to the earlier years, earlier surveys. And as usual, the tobacco use is much higher in rural areas compared to the urban areas. And it is 4.6% among the boys and 3.4% among girls. Okay, among those who are using the smokeless tobacco. So we have a tobacco also can, can be considered to different category. The smoking tobacco, which is much higher among the men and the boys. The smokeless tobacco is quite common among the women also, uh, all that things. So we, we have the data here among the school going uh, children or the adolescent uh, children, the extent of tobacco use. Now, let me also touch upon the disability. Uh, of course, unfortunately, the latest data, what we have is from the last census of 2011. In India, we have around 27 million disabled persons, if you take all the population. But out of that, nearly 9 million are among the youth. It means 10 to 29 years. If you take 10 to 29 years, the adolescents and youth, around 9 million of them are disabled according to the census data. This is a more authentic data. And you will see there are more males among the disabled and among the male disabled than women disability is the highest share of that. And you, we, we also have some data on the accidents and other things happening. And it is a large number of them are youth and among them it is the male youth are the victims of the large number of road accidents. Its number is quite high. It is an avoidable mortality, but the, 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 whether it is tobacco consumption, whether it is alcohol consumption, whether it is road accident, the, it, what we call it as avoidable mortality. But in Indian case, the, the number of instances, the number of deaths are very high, and among them, the major share by the youth of our country. Now, let me, let me conclude by saying some important points here. So what we need is because of the lack of adequate and nationally representative data on health status of youth, 
it's a bigger challenge in understanding their health conditions so even where some data is available they usually portray youth as one category by considering their age but we have lot of variation among them who are the disabled the migrant sexual minorities and all of that so given this scenario now it is very important to undertake a comprehensive health survey of youth or even the comprehensive survey of youth itself including health investigating their vulnerabilities towards various problems including health conditions i think an institutions like rajiv gandhi national institute of youth development should take the lead to undertake a nationally representative youth survey covering their employment education health and many other dimensions uh, youth in india are more prone to lifestyle factors injuries accidents substance abuse suicide sexually transmitted in infections and as i said earlier unwanted pregnancy or teenage pregnancies are there so it is a well documented fact that many deaths and disease burden among adults results from the health conditions and behavior initiated in their younger ages so we have a lot of data and research going on when we analyze the health conditions of adults and older people the problem is that many of them had a very poor health conditions and health behaviors when they were young and that get accumulated and affecting their health when they are old and when they have become adult so that is a scenario so if we are able to provide the good health services health access and health education advices to the young people many of the health problems of the futures or future years and ages can be solved so available evidence indicates that youth are prone to health affecting uh, conditions due to their personal choices unsafe sex behavior and unsafe behaviors environmental influences lifestyle changes and injuries so the teenage pregnancy high risk of sexually transmitted infection sex selective abortions large number of them are young mothers youth young mothers in the young age group and malnourishment are the major health concerns of the youth today so lack of health and sex education also complicates the situation many young people have no access to service providers to seek attention to their health problems particularly their sexual and reproductive needs i don't know somehow even in india even now though in many places in many respect we say that we are progressing we are becoming a super power when it comes to sexual education to our school going children our college going boys and girls there are lot of difficulties lot of differences of opinion many people are not willing to provide that sexual education which which in a way affecting their health and their reproductive behaviors in a bad way so we are need to look into this aspect of providing a universal sex education or adult life education to our young boys and girls who are in the high school level higher secondary level or even college level we need to design and implement health education programs focusing on the needs of the adolescents and youth and mass health communication campaigns are required to engage youth directly including those who are part of formal educational institutions and large number of them are who are dropped out of the school or who never went to school so we have to we have to get uh, we have to catch hold of both those who are in the educational institutions as well as those who are outside the schools so many health programs did not yield the desired results due to poor implementation and lack of intersectoral coordination between the various departments of government so let me come to the last slide of my presentation today uh, according to the national family health survey data nearly one fourth of married young females experience the violence intimate partner violence or domestic violence it can be physical sexual or emotional violence this is a very worrying aspect and if you look at the young woman young uh, woman married woman they are the nearly one fourth of them are the victims of domestic violence or intimate partner violence a large number of young married women under pressure from the family and the community are forced to undergo sex selective abortions much against their wishes if you look at the data you will see that uh, in a country obsessed with the son preference 
for various socio cultural or even economic reasons a uh, large number of young mothers are forced to undergo sex selective abortion or female feticide uh, because of the pressure from their husbands the families or parents or parents in laws and that is a reality now we also need to enforce the laws that are required for a healthy society even there are many provisions of act like pndt act to to control and regulate and to eliminate the sex selective abortion and other things but still we know that if you go by the data and you go by the evidences still it is happening in a big way in some parts of the country so most of our health programs and policies lack a comprehensive approach to young people's health so though we have a large scale health programs but somehow the focus on the youth and adolescents are not not enough good enough some of the more attention is given on maternal and child health issues and other things health of the older people but somehow in our policies and programs the adolescents and young people health requirements and health needs are not getting enough attention so it is high time we recognize the diverse and the increasing health needs of our youth and adolescents and their right to health and access to adequate and sympathetic health care services so when you look at the health conditions i i i feel uh we need more data we need more evidence we need our health policies and programs to focus more on the health requirements and health needs of our young boys and girls our youth and we need to reorient these programs and policies taking into consideration the requirements and needs of the large number of youth population in our country i will i will stop here my presentation here and if you have any questions i will be uh, most happy to uh, take it up interesting uh, i just want to make just an observation uh, you were talking about early marriage and i found a very interesting uh, da uh, information data actually uh, early marriage uh, uh you know in the, in those states where it is very high especially madhya pradesh if you see it is low among the females and more among the males it's just 23 among the females and 30 among the males it's a very surprising fact and i wonder what could be the cause for it whether uh, iips uh, does further uh, you know any studies on these kind of uh, you know data which would you know reveal a lot of interesting facts and uh, secondly i would just like to know sir because you were mentioning about the importance of having uh, youth specific data uh, uh, what uh, how can we achieve this especially you know sir in, in health sector in the youth health sector uh, with iips you know being the major uh, you know the institute which is uh, you know spearheading the collection of information whether uh, any um, you know from our jnyd request or from our ministry whether we could collect data which is very youth specific on different issues of on, on aspects of youth health uh coming to your last question uh, in 2007 and 8 iips carried out a youth in india survey that was the last survey focusing on youth and it was done only in six states and including tamil nadu and it covered all aspects their pre marriage education pre marital life their uh, sexual life employment uh, their aspirations lot of data after that there is there was no follow up survey of that uh, that survey was uh, undertaken by iaps and population council together so i feel there is a scope for similar type of surveys where rgn why id can take the initiative and uh, think about that now the age of marriage you are raised a big, big issue only thing we have to keep in mind is that when we talk about the boys it is we are talking about the 20 those who got married before 21 years and girls it is 18 years it is focused in certain districts for example if you go to i we have done some field work in the sravasti district in uttar pradesh it is bordering india and nepal very backward district and you will be surprised to know various cultural norms and other practices the age of marriage is so low among both boys and girls is more or less equal even the the nfhs survey also shows that it is more or less similar number of boys and girls are getting married at a very young age so there are certain pockets what we call hot spots where the cultural norms are still 
very strong that they prefer the boys and girls to get married at much, much much young age maybe they are not getting the educational opportunities awareness is practically missing there may be many many factors responsible for that and uh, of course when we usually discuss about the marriage age at marriage we only talk about the girls i also want to bring the attention to the boys and they are also a large number of them are getting married before they reach the 21 years age of age. yeah and that means they have to drop out of their education they have to find some jobs now suddenly they are getting married they are status has changed in a village they have to look after their wife and after one or two years they are going to have children and then they have to take up some job to support the family the entire education and their their the, their life has totally changed because of the early marriage uh, which is almost decided by the uh, the uh, the senior members in the household the so most cases it is not the choice of the boy or a girl but it is the family's decision so anyway it is a reality in some parts of the country though it is coming down but still it is a major issue uh, affecting both boys and girls yeah. thank, thank you. you sir thank you sir i uh, just one more question one small question is uh, why uh, has uh, nfhs take um, data taken into consideration uh, alcohol consumption mortality rate among youth Uh, uh, the body mass index, you know, but these are also yeah. important aspects of which you know go to determine the youth of yes. health, the health of youth. Yes, yes, I I understand your concern and interest in that. Uh, all those issues which were covered in the earlier rounds of NFHS is also covered. The only thing is that the raw data is yet to be released. It may be released maybe another one month or two months, so one can do more research on that. Uh, what is released is a fact sheet which give us some idea about what is the what is the level of anemia among these that but if you have to do more analysis by age wise gender wise and uh, community wise you need the raw data and that will be available uh, slowly maybe another one or two months that data will be in the public domain thank you sir thank you